Praise the Lord. Just like the morning dew was taking your voice away. I said, Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for how He has led us, how He has made us to make progress. Progress in learning. Progress in yearning for more. And progress in earning all that heaven has for us. You know, don't disturb me with your amen. You no, no, no. Say the amen at the right time. You know that lady there. Amen. Let me finish before you. Don't shout me down. Now give me a good amen. amen. Before I continue, I'm a teacher. Teacher of the world. And when I come to class, I don't ever permit anyone in my class to shut me down by any action by any word because you know we're here in Bielsa Medical University if they're teaching those students the way they ought to go and what they ought to know in medicine and if one of the students will shout and another one will cry, another one will do another thing uh, to shut the lecturers down. We'll not have good doctors. And when you come to learn the word of God, there must be the yearning in your heart. I want to know. I want to hear. I want to learn. It's the yearning that helps you to learn you yearn, you learn, and what you learn is what will make you earn a good position in life, a good job in life, and you'll be the better for the thing you do because of the learning. Don't, talk, don't forget that. You yearn, you learn, you earn. Now, we're here, and the Lord has seen us through until this point, and I pray Everything we hear will become power in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, normally when I teach, I shouldn't tell you what I should tell you now. I review what I do in the past if I'm taking a series. And then I come, I land on a subject of the day. So, pay attention be patient. If your wristwatch is disturbing you, remove it and put it in your pocket. We are led by the Spirit, not by your wristwatch. Father, we thank you today and bless your name. We glorify you. You are mighty God. You are a great God. And Lord, I pray that this day you open the heavens and you impart your life, your word, your power into everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Open our eyes of understanding and help us, Lord, to be stronger, Amen. to be wiser, Amen. and to have greater authority and power in the ministry, in the life, in the home, everywhere because of what we learn today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Isn't it wonderful? That as we are coming to the conclusion today, was that in ways grace 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 that's the reason the greater reason for being in the ministry grace that's what brought us to salvation grace that's what brought us to holiness holiness and sanctification grace that's what brought us into service and as you look at the acts of the apostles we are going to find it says in acts of the apostle chapter 4 it said that they had great grace and with great grace and great boldness and power 
he ministered the word of God. Chapter 11, Acts of the Apostles, when he saw the grace that was in them, he continued, he told them they should continue and cleave unto the Lord. We can see the grace in the change of life. We can see the grace in the hatred of sin. We can see the grace in the love for righteousness. Grace. By grace are you saved? And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Grace. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us. Now, grace is not dormant. Grace is not silent. And grace does not encourage sin. Grace does not encourage evil habits. Grace does not encourage a licentious life, teaching us that leaving all those ungodliness and worldly laws, that we should walk soberly and righteously. We should walk holily in this life. That's grace. If you have another kind of grace, that permits you to go on the way of hell while you are trying to get to heaven. The Bible doesn't know anything about that. Shall we continue with sin that grace may abound? Romans chapter 6, verse 1. God forbid, how shall we who have been uh, delivered and set free and brought out of that sin, how shall we continue therein? Because be made free from sin. We became the servants of God and we live in righteousness. And where grace was sin abound, grace also abound so that we can have righteousness through the grace of God. Grace is the grace of God that also fits us for ministry. And Paul the apostle said, I am what I am. He didn't say, I'm a mediocre by the grace of God. I'm a backslider by the grace of God. I'm still chewing sin, drinking sin by the grace of God. I'm walking a licentious life, a careless life by the grace of God. He said, no, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. And I'm set right. And I'm steadfast in the way of the Lord by the grace of God. So understand, whenever you hear about grace, by the way, we don't worship grace. We we'll worship the giver of grace. By the way, we don't bend or bow at the altar of grace. Grace has no altar. You know, grace is everywhere. And that grace is available. We bow. Not at the altar of grace. We bow at the altar of God. The God of all grace that comes to our lives and makes a change and makes a transformation. So we come to the grace of God, but we don't come into sin. We don't come into evil. We don't come into carelessness. We live our lives, our lives of holiness, our lives of righteousness by the grace that turns our lives around. Already, you know from the Acts of the Apostles, you know things that are important. Number one, the Word. Number two, the Holy Spirit. Number three, the name, the name of Jesus. Number four, is the heavenly vision. Number one is the authority of the Word in life and in ministry. Number two is the confirmation by the Holy Spirit in ministry. As we give ourselves and yield ourselves to the Lord, we're saved, we're sanctified, and then we know you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And it says, tarry and wait in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high, because John baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized 
immersed, deep, submerged in the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And they waited, and they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication for the men and the women. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all sitting together in one accord in one place and suddenly there was a mighty noise from heaven and the wind filled the whole house and then tongues like a sofa came upon each of them and they began to speak in another language as the spirit gave them utterance and then they went in the power in the anointing in the strength of that Holy Spirit as they went on till the end of the Acts of the Apostles and then they had the name. The Lord Jesus said, He gave us the name, the transformation through the name of Jesus for ministry. And you will see from Acts chapter 3, silver and gold have I known in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. It happened. And that name continued to walk until the end of the Acts of the Apostles. And actually, I told you, there is not a period, a total full stop, an amen after the last chapter because we're now to continue in that same way with the word for the Spirit and for the name of Jesus. And I pray all this will work mightily in your life, in your ministry, in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, does I need a good amen now? Amen. And now today we come to the heavenly vision. The heavenly vision. If there's anything that we can tell what sustains them, what made them to remain the way they ought to remain in power, in authority, and in success. And they were moving on with the gospel of the Lord. And many people were coming into the kingdom. It is because the heavenly vision was sustained as a authority. C, confirmation. T, transformation, S, sustainers. Sustaining the heavenly vision till the end. Sustaining the heavenly vision till the end. That's the subject for today. Let's look at Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 17. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 17. And it shall come to pass. In the last day, says the Lord, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. You understand? Acts, the Acts of the Apostles started with the need, the necessity of the Holy Spirit. And here we are told, here is the Holy Spirit poured out according to the prophecy of Joel. And it says, as the evidence, as the consequence of that Holy Ghost being poured out, poured out it says, and your young men shall see visions. And as you go through the Acts of the Apostles, that's what you'll find. You'll find visions there. He Heavenly vision. Chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 19. Acts, chapter 26, reading from verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. All the other apostles could say that. Philip could say that. The members of the church, they that were scattered abroad, who went everywhere, preaching the word, 
they could say that. And those who established the church in Jerusalem and then in Antioch and in various cities all over the world, they that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Every one of them could have said, whereupon, O King Agrippa, we were not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. And in our lives, if we had any vision at all, if we had any revelation at all at the beginning of the ministry, then if we're going to receive the crown, if we're going to receive the well done from the Lord on the final day, the vision he gave us at the beginning, we must be able to say, I have not been disobedient to the heavenly vision. Think about it yourself. Let me give you my own experience, my own understanding of my own personal calling. As you apply that to yourself, from the beginning, even before, Deeper Life started as Deeper Christian Life Ministry. The vision he gave, that he gave me, the heavenly vision, is that people will get saved, their lives will be transformed, their lives will turn around, and they then will take the word of God that says, follow peace with all men and holiness, Without which no man shall see the Lord. That was the vision. And so we started the Bible study of 15 people. Actually, before we started the Bible study, I was invited to the university over there, 1972. And they gave me the subject to preach. And to the best of my understanding of the scripture, I preached that talking about salvation, transformation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things, all things, all things have become new. I deliver the message as I have learned in the world. Immediately I finish, I just drop the microphone, then somebody came and took that microphone. It's like, wait, 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 everybody. We don't accept what the man has preached. He said, nobody can live above sin. Nobody can live without sin. They will all be sinning until they get over there yonder. What could I do? It wasn't my fellowship. It wasn't my ministry. It wasn't my congregation. They invited me, so I just sat down. Another person then came and said, no, hold on. We too, we don't believe, but let him go away. And after he's gone away, we'll settle ourselves. And then uh, that same year, the Lord brought me to that university to do my postgraduate in education. And I didn't want to have anything to do with that bunch because they said they didn't want the word of God. But God worked it out. That eventually uh, they invited me. Actually, they were looking for a speaker, a great, great speaker. They had, you know, the meeting was on and the speaker did not come. So they came to me and they said, uh, would you please help us to, you know, address the people? And then I got up five minutes. I said, give me five minutes to prepare. And then I put some things on paper. And uh, God used me. And people were saved. And people repented. Lives turned around. And then the second day, the speaker did not come. They said, come on again. Third day, the speaker did not come. They said, come again. That's how the Lord made me at that time. In the midst of opposition. In the midst of contradiction, to carry the heavenly vision to them there. And by the grace of God, we then started deeper life there when I became a lecturer there, University of Lagos. And we had about 15 people. And then we went to the same vision, the same vision, not cheap grace that makes people live a defeated life, a sinful life. Grace, 
grace that is greater than all our sins grace that purifies us within grace that makes us to live a life that God himself has ordained if Christ died on the cross of Calvary crown of thorns upon his head or the lashes upon his back almost naked shameful death and then after that all we have is living a sinful life that will be painful to the Lord but he died to give us grace the grace that lives in righteousness and since that time by the grace of God have continued publicizing proclaiming preaching of that heavenly vision about people that have openly to my face have rejected and have told me they didn't want that I could tell you stories of people that came they fasted and they came with what they call prophecy and they told me that this will not continue they said God sent them to me to tell me that there's no holiness I said, God sent you to me for me to tell you that without holiness, you will not get to heaven. He wanted you to hear. That's why he sent you to me. Not that he sent you to me to tell me that there's no holiness. I didn't allow anyone, not choir, not worker, to change the heavenly vision. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall say the Lord. And we're sustaining that. I'm sustaining that. I do crusade, but I'm still deep alive. I go to other churches, but I'm still deep alive. I help all the people I can help. I will not allow crusade, help, helping others to take the heavenly vision away from me. It will not. Yeah. I said it will not. Yeah. By the way, choir, if you are deep alive, choir, when you come to sing at the crusade, don't bring that worldly dancing, don't bring that into the, you know, crusade where deep alive is organizing. And then don't bring all that kind of dress that I saw last night. The woman shall not put on. That would belongs to a man. When you wear a jacket like I'm wearing now, that belongs to the man. When you wear your trousers of whatever make, that belongs to the man. Crusade doesn't mean that we forget where we're coming from. Crusade does not mean that we forget the heavenly vision and we bring the world into the church. It will stop. Yeah. And so you pastors who are here, don't say, I saw those uh, deeper life uh, choir members, the ladies, I saw the way they dressed, I saw what they put on. I'm going to go to my church and do that also. Those are incorrigible members of deeper life. We have, you know, different, um, you know, categories of deeper life. The people who respect their pastor, the people who love their pastor, the people who accept everything their pastor is saying, they wouldn't do that. They will see me sitting on the seat there and then bring the dancing of the world and the dressing of the world right in my presence there and say if we can do it in his presence we can do it in his absence maybe you can because that's your nature the nature of incorrigibility but whatever people do to me whatever people do in my presence i I've made up my mind, I will continue with the heavenly vision. How about you? I said, how about you? I might tell you the whole story. 1977, as I continued, my overseer then in the church I was going, he called me and he said, Kumui, didn't even say brother. 
Kumu. This thing you're doing, you know, is going to land you in trouble. I said, what am I doing? You're going about your preaching. We're not giving you ordination or license to do that. I said, well, the Bible gives me the license to do that. He said, Bible, are you quoting Bible to me? I said, well, Bible believers now. He said, okay. And then the following Sunday, they went to the church, announced my name, and they said, I was excommunicated, sent out of the church. And I couldn't attend that church again. I didn't drop the heavenly vision because of that. I faced opposition. I faced contradiction. I faced people who have iron for their backbone in their incorrigibility. That didn't change me. But else that will not change me. Yeah. I came with the heavenly vision. I came with all my heart, wanting to sacrifice everything I've got to hell in my Elsa stage. And whether they are choir, whether they are ministers, whatever, by Elsa stage will not steal and take away the heavenly vision from my hand. Yeah. Give me a good, good amen. Yeah. You'll be unhappy if you heard that after I left by Elsa stage, that you know the attitude and the actions and the dressing so weighed me down that it made me tired. I couldn't continue anymore. I will continue, yeah. and you will continue yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. You say, Pastor, are you fighting this morning? Yes. Honestly contending for the faith was delivered unto the saints. Fight the good fight of faith. They want to take the gospel from you, you don't fight. They're taking holiness from you, you don't fight. Your own children you have raised up, they are taking the kernel of the gospel, the power of the gospel, the righteousness of the gospel, the holiness of the gospel away from your hand and you are not smiling. You don't have what it takes to keep the heavenly vision. But by the grace of God, I will keep the heavenly vision. And to all the choirs all over the world, belonging to deeper life, don't bring in another thing because of crusade. Let the holiness remain. Let the righteousness remain. Let the change of life remain. Because the world is at enmity with God. And if you bring in the world, you become an enemy of God. This church, they palive. Crusade or no crusade. Ministers' conference or no ministers' conference. Everything the Lord had revealed, we're going to keep unto the end in Jesus' name. Amen. I will. I, will. I said, I will. I will. I will. Sustaining. The heavenly vision till the end. Three things we're looking at. I'm looking at number one, commitment to the highest vision on earth. Number two, concentration on the harvest vision with earnestness. Number three, consecration. The first one is concentration. Consecration for the heavenly vision till the end. And I pray everything we say today, everything we learn today will become power inside your life, inside your heart, till the end in Jesus' name. Number one, we're looking at commitment to the highest vision on earth. Commitment to the highest vision on earth. Acts chapter 6, reading from verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason, it is not reasonable, 
it is not suitable that we should leave the words of God and serve tables. And then in verse 3, it says in verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint to this business. And then in verse 4, it says in verse 4, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Commitment to the highest vision on earth. Look at verse chapter 8, verse 4. Chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. The highest vision anyone could commit himself to here on earth. Three things. Number one, the Lord's focus on the great commission. Number two, their loyal faithfulness with great commitment. Number three, the lasting fruit of great conversions. Number one, the Lord's focus on the great commission. It tells us in Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19, Go ye therefore, because I have all power in heaven, on earth, with that power, with that understanding, with that persuasiveness. Go therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things. Don't drop anything that Christ had taught, teaching them to observe all things. The time will come when men and women, when youths and young people, young adults, will not endure sound doctrine. All the same. They will not take the authority from Christ. Christ is still the final authority, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And the church said, yeah. it says, to the end of the world, everything he taught, everything he emphasized, everything he revealed, to the end of the world, you will observe those things personally in your life. And then, after observing, after leading that life, a life of righteousness and holiness, without which no man shall save the Lord, you will teach it so that the people that hear, they get genuinely saved. And we have to preach repentance and faith in Christ for that to happen. Luke chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. And then in verse 49, and behold, I, Christ, I, the Savior, I, the Sanctifier, I, your Good Shepherd, behold, I, with all authority and power, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Look at number two there. Number two is their loyal faithfulness or great commitment. 
they are loyal, faithfulness, with great commitment. Look at chapter 2 of Acts. I'm reading from verse 14. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Then he spoke to them. He didn't tone down the words, because a few weeks earlier, these same people that killed Jesus, and Jesus died, and was buried, and then he rose again. He told them the whole story. And he told them they were the guilty ones. He didn't get angry. When he's a sinner who really wants to get to heaven, when he hears the word of God, he doesn't get angry. What are you angry at? You stole. The preacher said, you are a thief. He told the truth. You killed the Lord. And the preacher said, you killed Christ, the Prince of Life. That's what you did. What are you angry at? You beat your wife and you sent out your wife and now you say, whatever. I'll never take back the wife. And the preacher comes and he says, you've driven your wife away. Why how can you get angry? You did it and the preacher said it. And he called them to repentance. Then in verse 36, we're told, verse 36, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were preached in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men, and brethren, what shall we do? They accepted we were wrong. They accepted we killed the prince of life. Can we do anything about that? Now, they wouldn't have come to that place of conviction and confession, which would lead to conversion if Peter had not kept the heavenly vision. Keep the word as the word ought to be. Don't look at the faces of those who are listening to you. Stay with the word. Stand with the word. And emphasize the truth. So they came to conviction. When they had this, they, they were preached in their heart. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Look at verse 38. Verse 38, then Peter said unto them, Repent. Now, the other apostles were there, and none of the other apostles said, Peter, sit down. Why are you telling them, repent? Believe. Why are you telling them to repent? Receive. Why are you telling them to repent? Just praise the Lord. They didn't contradict each other. You know, in a meeting, the choir must never contradict the preacher. You're like the forerunner, like John, coming before the Lord Jesus, the real preacher of the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. And John said, he must increase and must decrease. Anyone that comes before the preacher and wants to increase, wants to be magnified, wants to be great, wants clapping, wants adulation, you cannot really serve well. You must decrease that the preacher of the word will come and you still respect the preacher. Not that you're pulling this way and the preacher is pulling another way. And none of the other apostles came to contradict Peter. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then in verse 39, he said, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. In verse 40, we are told, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward from this evil generation then in verse 41 and they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls then in verse 42 and these all continued they continued in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in prayers because any disciple or any convert that just comes in and then goes back to the world, we cannot, you know, make anything out of them. But they, the 3,000, all continue steadfastly, wholeheartedly, with all their mind, all their soul, and with all the decision they could take within them. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. They were committed and the Lord will help us to remain committed in Jesus' name. Look at number three there. Number three there is uh, the lasting fruit of great conversions. Lasting fruit of great conversions. Lasting fruit. Their conversions remain. Not that, you know, after the, you know, ministry to the people, they raised up their hands, you take down their names, and now you want to follow up on them. And, uh, oh, they said, I went there for healing. I didn't go there for, you know, eternal life, salvation. I can't part with my cigarette. I can't part with my alcohol. I can't part with my sin partner. No. These people... The fruit of the great conversions remains. And I pray the fruit of great conversions will remain in your life in Jesus' name. You yourself, as the fruit of this conference, you'll remain. You'll abide. And the word you have heard. Even when I'm going back to my station and you go back to your station you will continue in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look up here. I remember the people, the pastors that taught me about salvation, about sanctification, about holiness, and eventually, and they were very friendly, very kind, very loving. And what, but once I started the Bible study, he turned around and he called me. And I, I can see the faces of those people now. They even called me to a kind of a conference, a committee. I see that man there, that man there. I see this other man here. And then, as I look at that, it was like Jonah in the whale's belly. But I came out. I said I came out. That's why you see me here today. They became angry. Very forceful. It threatened. I couldn't begin to tell you what one of them said. Threatening. But I didn't say. He taught me sanctification. He taught me that I didn't know before. Anger is a sin. And then now he, he gets angry at me. And he said some things that... If I accepted them, I would have died physically. But I didn't say he taught me sanctification. Now he's angry with me. And look at what he's saying. Then I drop sanctification. Take your sanctification. No, that is not their sanctification. Circumcision of heart is in the Bible. Sanctification is in the Bible. Holiness is in the Bible. Let the people that taught me, let them change if they want to. I can't drop that. It's the word of God. 
Am I going to deny Christ because one of his messengers misbehaved and then showed hatred to me? No. They continued. And when you hear the word of God and you know that is the word of God, you don't get angry and say, well, if he is the one that's rebuking me, that correcting me like that, then I reject you are not a true convert. If you're a true convert, you will continue. Look at me, I continue. I said, I continue. All these years from 1964, when I got converted, until this time now, 2022, all the teaching I knew, whatever the people did, I saw some things they did even in their private lives because I was close to them. All that did not take what I knew away from me. Whatever you see around you, it will not take away the real gospel and the power of the gospel from your life in Jesus' name. I continue. I said I continue. Look at Acts chapter 6 verse 7. Acts chapter 6, we're looking at verse 7. And the word of the Lord increased, and the number of the disciples were multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient unto the faith. A great company of the priests obedient to the faith be it fulfilled in your life in jesus name yeah. we're coming to point number two now point number two we're looking at concentration on the harvest vision with earnestness not with dullness not with tiredness not with weariness not with depression, but you concentrate on the harvest vision with earnestness. And I pray that this vision to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, nothing will discourage you. Nothing will depress you. I will not be depressed. Say that again. You'll not be depressed in Jesus' name. Not disheartened in Jesus' name. Concentration on the vision. Look at Acts chapter 11. Reading from verse 12. Acts 11 verse 12. And the, sp and the Spirit bid me go. But then nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me and we entered into the man's house. That's Peter talking. He saw the vision coming down from heaven. And the Lord said, rise up, take and eat. He didn't understand. So he said, nothing common, unclean, ever in touch my mouth and the lord said in that vision what god himself has cleansed that call not common unclean and while he was thinking of that the spirit of god said the men are asking for you go with them doubting nothing and so he now reported back the spirit Bid me go with them, nothing doubting. And he concentrated on that harvest vision. Three things. Number one, the priority of preaching above comfort or convenience. Number two, their perseverance in preaching contrary to convention. Number three, the preservation of the congregations of converts. Number one, the priority of preaching 
above comfort or convenience. Acts chapter 5, verse 17. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. They were angry. But thank God, if you have the Holy Ghost, the comforts, the anger of man is nothing. And the anger of woman is nothing. Look at what he did. In verse 18, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Put them in the common prison. That means they didn't look at them as VIP, very important people. They didn't give them good treatment as apostles, the highest in the church, the highest in society. They didn't look at them like that. They looked at them as common people, read frats, as people they should match on. And so they put them in the common prison. Verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors. The angels didn't look at them like the Sadducees and the Pharisees looked at them. The angels were sent by God. Those are men of honor. Those are men of prestige. Those are men of the great commission. Go down there and open that common prison. It's not right for the highest of, the, of people that should have the highest honor. It's not right for them to be there. Go and open those prison doors. And the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. He'll bring you forth. And then in verse 20, verse 20 says, Go, stand, speak in the temple. Don't let any Sadducee, Pharisee uh, clamp on you, cower you, make you like a jellyfish, make you like you don't have backbone. Go to that place again. Stand. Don't fidget. Stand. Don't wobble. Stand. Don't collapse. Don't say, what can I do now? Stand like a real apostle. Stand like a real soldier. Stand like a messenger of God from heaven. Stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And that's what they did. That's what they did. Because they knew the calling of the Lord was upon them. Look at verse 42. In verse 42, and daily in the temple, in the presence of those Pharisees, the presence of those Sadducees, and daily in the temple, and in every house, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. I pray that that same commitment and that same concentration the Lord will give to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. And whatever is happening, and whatever is not happening, that word will come out from you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at the next point there, number two there, is their perseverance in preaching contrary to convention. Their perseverance in preaching contrary to the expectation of the people. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 28. In Acts chapter 5, verse 28, saying, Did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That will happen to you in your life. 
in your ministry, in your community. It will happen in Jesus' name. And remember, the word, the spirit, the name working together. And the Lord confirming the word will signs following. Signs will follow you. Power will follow you. Don't be afraid of anything. In my own ministry, there was a time a young girl was converted. And this young girl converted, went back home. And then the parents were unhappy. They said, how could that be? That you change from this, and then you are now calling on Jesus. They began to beat her mercilessly. They wanted to beat Jesus out of her. Nobody can do that. And then when they saw they were not succeeding, they called a herbalist. Herbalist. That's this, the Jew people. You know herbalist? Tell me now. To come and do something to her and use all the leaves, all the whatever. Now, God created all those trees, all those leaves. You cannot take what God has created and join them together and say something there. He created language. And then use that to walk against Christ the Word, Christ the Savior. And while that Jew man was doing that, that girl said, Have I least? You will also believe what I believe. He said, What? I'm here to drive that thing out of you. And the girl said, You will come to believe exactly as I believe. Then did all the concoctions and the forced her and all that. But that thing did not weaken her, made her strong. You'll be stronger in Jesus' name. Yeah. And so, that herbalist became sick. And he went to all other herbalists, even those who were stronger than him. They couldn't do anything. He was sick, sick, sick. And the girl heard, and the girl said, Papa, I'll take you to my church. Said, so shut up. We we'll drove that thing out of you. And that thing will never raise the head again. And the girl said, Papa, until you come, you'll not get healed. Girl, if a girl can say that, and be bold, you, pastor, preacher, apostle, prophet, evangelist, you cannot stand and tell them from today you will tell them. Yeah. And so the girl kept on going to her papa and said, Papa, to get out of this, you have to come. And the man was almost dying. And so he accepted. What can he do now? And he came to our Thursday revival hour. I didn't know she was, he was there. I didn't, I, the people were probably just very many. And then I was praying. And I said, there's a man there. And I described the whole story without anybody telling me. I said, if you raise up your hand now, you'll be healed. And the man knew that that girl had not come to speak with me. He raised up his hand. I, yes, that, I said, that's the man I'm looking for. I said, in Jesus' name, sickness, come out. You didn't say amen. amen. And the man was instantaneously healed. And then, as we made the altar call, that man with all his juju and everything dropped everything and begged to Christ the Lord and became a member, a standing member of our church. You see, if you carry on with the heavenly vision and you persevere, 
the Lord will grant you such breakthrough in Jesus name so Peter and the rest of the apostles answered and said we ought to obey God rather than men and then they continued keeping and preaching the word of the Lord look at number three there number three their preservation the preservation of the congregations of converts those congregations were preserved they remained and they were abiding and i pray as you serve the lord and you concentrate and you consecrate i pray that your congregations will continue in jesus name they will continue in their salvation. They will continue in sanctification and holiness. They will continue in the service of the Lord and evangelism in Jesus' name. Your congregation will not cast you out. Your congregation will not contradict you. Your congregation will not kill your spirit. Amen. You still be alive and you still be doing what you know the Lord has called you to do. And they'll become mature and they'll become obedient. They'll not even try to kill your spirit or to destroy you or to clamp down on you. But you'll be going from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 9, Acts chapter 9, verse 31. In Acts chapter 9, verse 31, then at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. And they were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And they were multiplied, multiplied multiplied if you want the blessing of multiplication where are you reserve that hand multiplication of your ministry multiplication in your profession multiplication in the calling of your life in jesus name we're looking at point number three point number three we're looking at the consecration for the heavenly vision until the end until the end until the end and it's not just that you continue you still have the same conviction at the end as you had at the beginning and the same focus the same vision and the same steadfastness at the end like your arch at the beginning it is no point that you know all the good good things in your hand you have dropped conviction you have dropped doctrine you have dropped bible you have dropped a holy life you have dropped and then you're still moving on i'm going on till the end keep all that god has invested in your life the salvation the sanctification, the holy life, the power of the Holy Ghost, and the commitment to evangelizing. Keep everything together with one man, one wife, until death do us part. Everything the Lord had given you at the beginning, you continue with everything until the end that's a beautiful continuing not that you know you have to tell you, you've lost your back your backbone you've lost your breath you've lost your consecration you've lost everything you're not just a sugar daddy sugar mommy and you push you here and there and you're a slave to the people and you don't have conviction anymore and then you say i'm continuing no gather it up again and get up again and say everything i ever had i repossess and then you continue and by the grace of god 
If we're going to meet again, uh, I mean, this same congregation will not be together exactly like this any other time. If we're going to meet again, we'll meet at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. That will remain, we abide in that heavenly vision until the end. Look at this. Three things there the price of the heavenly vision, the pursuit of the heavenly vision, the priority of the heavenly vision. Look at number one, the price of or for the heavenly vision, the price. We're looking at Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 45. Matthew chapter 13, verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven it's like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pills. Then verse 46, who when he had found one pill of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. The kingdom, the gospel, the heavenly vision, the ministry, the service, what the Lord has committed into your hand, such of such a great value that whatever you have to give up, whatever you have to deny yourself of, whatever you have to in a way sell out, give up, and possess that heavenly vision, you do that and pay that price, and by the grace of God, you'll make it finally in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 7. But what things were gained to me, the things that were profitable, the things that were gained unto him. Think about your life. What are the things that are so precious? There are some people who are precious to them, friends. And without those friends, they cannot go to sleep at night. Friends. Other people, money. Other people, popularity. Other people, a position in a community. Vote for me, vote for me. And that's so precious. But then uh, you realize, if I give myself fully, completely, to what the Lord is calling me to, friends may drop out. I experienced that, but I went, I kept on moving on. There may be no money, not as much money as you needed at that time. We keep on moving. And there may be the loss of position, popularity. What are you doing with popularity? If you are not popular in heaven, you drop that. The price we pay. Whatever we have to give up, that we will continue. I pray God will help you. Amen. And you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then after that, all the other things shall be added unto you. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Verse 8, it says, yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I have suffered. The loss of all things. Can you suffer the loss? of some things? Can you suffer the loss of some people? Can you suffer the loss 
of some appreciation because of what you hold and you want to hold it until the end that whatever you have that will take that gospel that kingdom that holiness that sanctification away from your hand you see i have a choice if i hold on to this i'll miss heaven if i hold on to this holiness i'll get to heaven i'll be wise to drop what will hinder heaven and to hold on to what will lead me to heaven is that right the lord will help you you doubtless and i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but don't that i be win christ look at number two there number two the pursuit of the heavenly vision the pursuit of the heavenly vision those runners athletes in the olympics they're running and running they get tired almost out of breath they're looking at the finishing line they're looking at the reward they're looking at the medal they will have and even though they are tired they keep on running and keep on running and keep on running until the finishing line. They may get to the finishing line and just collapse there, but they get to the finishing line. If they can do it, our brothers, our sisters, our children, our sons, our daughters in the world running for the earthly crown. We running for the heavenly crown. We pursue until we get there. Am I talking to somebody there? you keep on pursuing uh, in Jesus' name. Judges chapter 8. We're reading from verse 4. Judges chapter 8 verse 4. And Gideon came to Jonah. And he passed over. I'll pass over. To higher ground, I will pass over. To greater ministry, I will pass over. And to greater success, I will pass over. And to greater achievement, I will pass over. Am I talking about you? It will happen in Jesus' name. But look at how it happens. We're looking at Judges chapter 8, verse 4. And Gideon came to Jonah and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him, faint yet pursuing. Faint yet pursuing. Tired, fagged out, out of breath, yet pursuing. That's what life takes. If you are pursuing the goal that the Lord has given you, tired, fainting, and things around you, almost wanting to make you stop, but you say no, one step more, one step more, one step more, and you will reach your goal in Jesus' name. Faith, yet pursuing. That's the attitude we ought to have. That's the mindset we ought to have. That is the strength of courage we ought to have. Faint yet pursuing. Look at number three here. Number three, the priority of the heavenly vision. That means in your life, many good things will come. Don't allow the good to block out the best. In your life, Many things will come high, highly evaluated. Don't allow the high to block out the highest, the highest in your life, the most glorious in your life. 
is the service of the Lord to bring sinners out of sin, bring them to the Savior, and keep on edifying them, helping them until they get into the kingdom at last. That's the highest thing you can ever do. And don't allow any other thing that comes your way to block out that good thing in your life. The priority of the heavenly vision. Philippians chapter 3, reading from verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended after he had preached in Damascus to the Galatians, to the Philippians, to the Ephesians, to the Corinthians. He said, I'm not through yet, brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended after they are reaching the epistle to the Romans, epistle to the Corinthians, epistle to Titus, epistles to Timothy, epistle to all those people and churches he wrote the epistles to. He said, I count not myself to have apprehended after many people, many souls have been won to the Lord in Thessalonica, in Berea, everywhere. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for unto those things which have before. Look at verse 14. It says, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You will press on. What are you? You will press on. What are you there? You will press on. The word of God in your heart. The spirit of God saturating your life, enveloping your life, the name of Jesus with all a supreme authority in your prayer. And then now the heavenly vision and the heavenly focus and the heavenly determination and the heavenly dedication in your life. You're moving on. I press on. Say it. I press, on. I press on. Sometimes in the morning, what you did the previous night has so taken away your physical strength that you can hardly get up. And then you say to your body, My body, get up. I need to press on. Sometimes you've gone through challenges and persecution. And then your mind is afraid to go to that same place again. And you say, my mind, get up, wake up. My soul, why are you discouraged within me? Because I must press on. Sometimes somebody writes a letter to you and then he says, now I just want to announce to you this new fanaticism. And this new commitment and this great consecration that you don't know anybody in all you know now is Bible bye bye and then in your mind it's like you are suffocated it's like the real reason for living in the past all that has gone away from you and then that's the time you remind yourself get up I say get up I say get up when all the people that loved you and all the people that you sh used to, you know, encourage you, pushing you on, and say, I just remembered you and they sent text to you. I remember you. I'm happy because of you. But now you say, I'm for Christ through and through all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, everything that is within me, I want to put in the service of the Lord. And the people that used to, you know, get interested in you and all that, they turn the other way. 
and then your mind is about to say, is this life worth living? I've lost that man. I've lost that woman. I've lost that friend. I've lost that partner. I've lost that companion. And when you're thinking like that, your soul is sinking. And then you tell yourself, wake up. What's happening to you? Get up and press on. And then a new strength will come. A new energy will come. A new power will come. A new determination will come. And you'll say, that's right, that's right, that's right. Paul is gone. You are the Paul of the day. Here now, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. While you are pressing on, the Lord will give you strength. Let me conclude with this. A minister, a pastor, a preacher, an evangelist. He's been going about getting so saved, getting the sick healed. He would be healed in their hundreds, in the meetings he went. But then a particular plague disease broke out. It affected members of his family. He was still ministering to them and praying for them. At last, the plague came on him. He was down. Not only lying down, he was down. His spirit was down. His mind was down. And the ministry before him, he thought, I could not continue. Then he prayed. Nothing happened. He prayed again. Nothing happened. He said, God, the ministry is before me. The preaching is before me. How can I do this ministry without my healing? And he had the voice, take me at my word. His body had not changed. Strength had not come. Healing had not come. Only the word Take me at my word. He didn't understand. He was still lying down there. Oh Lord, let me feel better. Let me feel different. The voice came again. Take me at my word. Then he understood. The Lord had said, occupy till I come. Take me at my word. So he got up. The disease was still there. The pain was still there. The weariness was still there. The tiredness was still there. Take me at my word. He dressed up. He picked his Bible. Said, Lord, I'll go. And the moment he stepped out, total healing, perfect healing came instantaneously, immediately. That pressing on will give you healing. Will give you strength. Will give you finance. Will give you everything you need in Jesus' name. The Lord is by your side. But He wants you to have that spirit of pressing on. You take Him at His word. All the needs of your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Press on. Press on. Press on. Where are you? Rise right, up and tell the Lord. No weariness. No fainting. No faltering. No discouragement. No crying. No sorrow. Pressing on. Pressing on. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. I'll press on. I'll press on. I'll press on.
let's open.